all right so in this session we are going to talk about structs so as you know struct is a, a value type that represents a structure the value uh, the, uh, type data type that represents um, structure and um, you know based on the theory that we did you know that um, structs can have a parameterized constructor you could have a static constructor can have constant fields you can have methods you can have properties indexes and all the lot you know struct is different from the enum that we did enum can just have you know variables like constants but you know no implementation but um, struct is could contain um you know um variables and their implementation but one thing that you need to know is that struct cannot have a parameterless constructor you cannot have a, a, a struct defined uh, in a way that you define a constructor a structure a constructor that doesn't have a, a parameter right so let's see let's see how it works um, so here um this is our program and this is our main method so just like we did in the enum so i'm going to have to create let me create a new so that we can get used to that way of writing instead of having to write everything in one in one code so let's create a new add just like we did new item so here i'm going to call it a struct example so i'll say struct example struct example right so um like that so i just had the c sharp now so a new uh, um file has been created and we can see right here struct so just like that too i'm going to change this i'm not this is not a class it's a struct so i'm going to have it called a struct a struct you know you use a struct keyword and then you give it a name of your choice so this one can be name of choice so, so similar to um, that one but let me just keep it as a um, struct example let me keep it as struct example so here <coughs> I'm going to use this opportunity to explain a bit of access modifier. I'm not going to go into that uh, details, but I'll just explain it a little bit. So here, um, let's say we have um, int a and um, or let me say int h. Just say int h and then int uh, frequency let me say i have <coughs> something defined as frequency right so here um this is just this is a way of referring defining um what's it called a struct so i define a struct and i define um a feed element here so these are called feed elements uh, they don't have um uh, at assignment so you can do this if you come here and say this is going to be uh 50 for instance you see that it's an error so unlike when you do in your class that you have and this you have that um, in a, your method that you have your feed element and you're assigning value to it so you can see what it's saying that struct example cannot have instance of uh, property or feed instantiations in struct you know so this is not is not um uh, possible here so you're gonna have to instantiate initialize your variable and then you can you know assign to it within your within a, a method or within your uh, constructor all right so here you just have these basics let's have basic like this and then let me go within my pr uh, program uh, program class uh, so in this program class i'm going to call that um, new struct so let's say here i said so you can you, how you declare this one is different from how you access this one is different from the way you access an enum so there are two ways you can use there are two ways of accessing that struct one is you can you use structs like this um sorry structs example that's a name you can see the name of that the name of that struct so you can call that and then you can see it's suggesting the compiler is suggesting names for you and the id name would be like um struct example so what is he saying is that you're declaring a struct example you know this is a new variable this can you don't have to follow it this could be any name it could be any name this is the name of your variable 
so what we are saying is that this this type now this any name is of type struct example you know is of type struct example you know this is your own define user define type you know is not pretty much like primitive you know like him builds like hint strings and all of that this one here you are the one that define this struct exam this is a data type that you define yourself right so this is how it works so you just define that you name it struct example that's the name of that your struct and then any name come here but i'm going to just use the ideal name which is uh which looks like this so anyone that sees this thing you know can relate that it belongs in in, in here so and you should keep such a naming convention for your variables so this is going to be there then you have this um struct example then you know your struct example contains certain values right so you can see that you have a struct example dot so when you say um this one so here you have the um struct example you know here you have some stuff you have um equals you have get hash code you have get type you have two strings and all of that so i'm going to go ahead and do some more within my within my struct so here let's say we um say we declare uh pretty much like a constructor so let's say i have public public um, so let me say that I have this public int age then you come in here you have your short example then you have age now so like I said let me use this opportunity to explain a bit of what we call access modifier so let me take it back to um where it was like this so when this was declared without um a public keyword you notice that in here when you call this struct example when you call this struct example and you see a dot meaning that you want to see all its members you want to see all its members you can see that you can access you can see uh a uh, you, you can see age and you can you can see the the other variable frequency when you when you use a dot so what it shows is um the operators operations that can be performed without struct you can see equals get hash code get type uh, to, uh, to string these are default methods that can be applied to that's your struct now when i went back to that struct and i i put something like this i say public so the moment i call it public you you can see that the the it's it became available here it became available within another within another uh code code block in another file like this so this will explain that when you use a public hmm, so they are in instruct let's take it this way the this this thing we call them this public thing is called access modifier it's called access modifier so let's take it this way the access modifiers here access modifiers modifiers here ah uh, so i'm gonna have let me just write here as a comment so here you have uh let's say one you have public um two you have um private and then you have internal three you have internal internal okay internal so here when you use a public access modifier when you use a public it means what it says it means that it's public to you know um hold the codes within this um the, within this struct and any other you know class or struct that instantiates that struct 
you know it's public here and anywhere it is used it's accessible to is a public property when something is public property everybody can use it you know everybody can access it all right so that is uh, public and then when something is private it means it's private to so you can see here now um when i do this private um when we did that we, we could see that we have dot h is showing up and then uh, so we can assign let's say we assign 56 to it we assign 56 to it and then we, we go back to our struct and then we make this guy a public as well if you make this guy a public as well then if you go back and try to get your struct variable dot you see that frequency also now becomes available because you know uh, it's a public property right so you can do this uh, equals to 44 but the moment i go back here and i make this guy a private then it's not accessible to code block outside here you know it's not accessible to code block outside this struct is only accessible to code blocks within this stru struct so if we go outside now if we go come here you can see there's an error because this frequency is not known there's nothing like that dot so there's nothing like like that you know this is just an intelligence you know there's nothing like that so it's not known it's private so when you use a private um, access modifier it's only accessible within the members of this struct within the member within here that's well it's as accessible all right and then if you use interna you can see interna like this then you go back here and you say dot you can see the frequency is available here so when you use interna the in, uh, difference between interna and public is interna it is accessible to not just within the same um uh what's it called it's accessible to all the codes within this um struct and any other um you know co code blocks that are used within the same assembly you you understand within the same assembly not outside this assembly so if we build this code now and it's an assembly let's say we call it tunga at the end of the assembly we call it tunga and then we build another assembly and then we call that one um, a google now google is now using tunga as an add-on you understand if we say interna interna is only available within the tunga assembly it's not accessible to the google because google is another assemb assembly you know so it's within the assembly internal to the assembly but when we say it's public public is public to this assembly and any other assembly that uses this assembly you know so that is the difference between a, a public and an interna that's the public difference between a public and interna. so this is a bit of access modifier so you see us using public private uh protected and all of those things later on so protected cannot be used here you cannot use there's another public identifier that is called protected but it can't use it here because um struts cannot be inherited you know if you use protected here you cannot derive you can see it's going to throw an error you see new protected member declared here so it's, it's not you can't use a protected access modifier for a struct one of the things that you need to know if you're going to be writing an exam or you're going to be attending any interview you know you can't use a protected here because what you know um a struct cannot be you know derived you can't derive of uh, from a struct no one can you know inherit a struct you know um so like that so you're gonna have um like that so let me take it back to interna so what you would realize from here from this um example that we've done now is that if you do not put any access modifier you know the default access modifier that you get is private because you can see that it's not the frequency is not um, available like this when you do not put any access modifier so it means that the default access modifier for a struct is what 
is private so if you would need it seen outside this which is, which is what we want so you either make it a public property or you make it an internal uh property you know so um this we need to we need to take note of that then let's create a constructor so let's say that here um we then have frequency because i made it uh, a public now let's say we write each console just like we've been doing so we can see that everything works just well before we move on so right line so let me just say um keeping it cool um keeping it cool with i'm keeping it cool with um the structs with the structs let me say i want to use uh, a string concatenation here uh at let's say you got that now i'm just using this at this this frequency so you have that uh, so if you run it so you can see i'm um, keeping you cool with destruct at 44 which is uh at the frequency you know so now let's move on we've learned how to declare basic variables and how to use basic access modifier within a struct now so moving on to declaring a, a constructor here so if i come in here um yeah back here now so if we come here now constructor is pretty much like the holder of the out so and constructor as you others you would see within your uh, in a class when we would, when we talk about class you see that is pretty the one the name based on what the name says constructor like you know the the builder of this house so it's declared by um the same name uh, of that structure of that class so you're gonna have to create public is a method actually is a, a different method so you have uh, public that now what we said was that a constructor cannot have um a parameterless constructor this is a constructor now and this is a constructor without a parameter because we didn't put anything within this bracket so look at what he's saying you can see a red which is an error you can say construct cannot contain explicit parameterless constructor explicit parameterless constructor it cannot you understand because here you have h you have frequency you have to declare that frequency you see for that errors you say there are two fields we have two fields these are called fields this is a field field h this is a field frequency so you can see it saying that field struct example or h must be fully assigned before control is returned field this one uh, frequency must be fully assigned before control is returned you understand this is what we are talking about when we're doing the theory this is what we are talking about now so here you you come in here and pass a parameter so you can say int you don't have to call it an h um it's or you if you do like let's say you, you say h and then and then you have another one int uh, frequency frequency there's nothing spoiled you have it like this and then you you assign this member here so you say this dot h which is this this in this case we're using this keyword now is referring to this struct this this is referring to this clause you can see when i highlighted the this structs and uh, struct example you know is highlighted is referring to them so you say this dot h is equals to the one that you have just passed here so you do this there's no problem like this but it's a common good practice so if you do this this dot frequency equals to uh frequency 
you assign this this one like this so this is the parameter that is passed to the constructor and this is your native member of this uh, of this struct so we do this kind of uh, variable declaration for your parameter and then the same having the same name as your member there's nothing spoiled it's it's pretty okay but it's a common practice that you have a different name even though you're going to call it an age you you want to add something to it to differentiate it from the default member right so um as such that way you will see a lot of uh, when if you read so, a lot of codes uh, c sharp codes or uh, this thing you see um something like um underscore uh the variable is just to declare to distinguish between this and the, if you use it this way there's nothing small you know but we just want to distinguish it such that no one's it's confused our code is pretty uh, readable uh, we know member from the parameter so i i want to ask i want to attach uh, an underscore here so i know the um the parameter is the one with underscore and then the member is the one without underscore or you want to do it otherwise maybe this one will have underscore and this one won't have underscore just to distinguish between the two so here i come back here and then um, i come back here like this so this is okay right now we have a parameter uh we have a constructor now we have a constructor now now that we have a constructor if you go back to your program um, class you know this is a way that i said that we can declare your you can declare your um your your structs just by saying mentioning the struct name and then you put the variable in front of it the second way of course would be to inst to create a new instance of it by using a new um variable a new keyword so we can say let's say we have here instead of using it this way instead of using it this way let's say i come in here and i say struct uh example which is the keyword now is struct example which is equals to new struct example with a new keyword right like this with a new keyword and then i have that struct example created and then i have um i have it like this so i can have it i can declare it this way as well and then have this assignment so if you run it now if you run it down you see that there is a build error so let's see what the build expected uh oh close this was not close this uh was not close right so that's why you run into a build error so you can see it's not respected of anybody so you can see it's it works pretty much the same way whether you use um, a new uh, you create a new struct with a new keyword or you just simply you know create it this way the way we did the first time all right so this is how you 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 work with your your uh, basic structs and then uh, creating a new a new constructor for it so the next thing i want us to do is to create a method uh, within a struct so if you go back to the struct example here so i come in here and i say um now i want to write a method so i'm going to also explain how method works but we we would have a, a deep dive of methods um when we talk more about classes and all of that so uh now i have public and then i'm going to have let's say i say int i will explain int and i say square say number square okay and then like this or i say a squared i say h squared all right so h squared and i say return h times sorry h times h so what i'm doing here is uh i'm having to return 
this h multiply by h so if you call h squared you have that returned all right so this is a method now pretty much like this feed element a method can also be private public you know uh they are all members of this of, of this struct so everything that you have here access modifier also applies to to this one too so if you make it private it means that it's not accessible to other people outside here but it's accessible to everybody within here right and then the the next thing that follows it is this um the type here so unlike this type here the type here is that a method would return a data type the kind of expected data type that you are expecting this data to return like here now this h is going to be an integer as well okay this h is going to be an integer as well right so if i'm not expecting anything i'm going to use um, like a void so it means that this h um, squared is not going to return anything all right it's just maybe an implementation so here int here will return an uh, uh what's it called an int if you come here and say string for instance you'll see that would have an error because this is not an int this is not a string is an integer so you cannot implicitly convert type int to string because this is what we are returning the string and uh, is int and here we are putting a string so and then if you say uh, a double so you can see that double stands because we know what we, when we talked about implicit conversion you know uh because the uh you know we the, the the double int can easily be converted to double without any you don't need any cast and anything like that so you can ha implicitly convert an int to to double so but if you come in here and let's use an appropriate data exact data that we're expecting so we have this to be int and then we have it like that so let's see how it works so what i say is that if you return h times h is multiply h by two um, by the same h so it's going to be h squared now if you go to my uh program squares and i say uh h squared is in this instance i just want to refresh your memory of screen concatenation here i'm going to revert to my preferred string interpolation so i'm going to have it like this so let me say here and um, here i say short example dot you know h squared which is a method so h squared so h squared is then I, I put i put it like this all right so now if you run it so let me put a number that you, you can easily calculate the 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 age so if you do this so we can see the h squared to be um 2500 so what we've done here this is a method it is a method it's pretty much just an implementation so we could have written anything within this code block uh we could have written anything within this uh code block right here right so we could have written anything there uh, but what we did was to just a simple returning h times h you know and it returns um it returns um h squared all right this is a basic way of so we can have another method if you like you know and um have that just like this like i said if i come in here and i make it a private method what you get to see is that uh, here now we begin to have uh, we have an error you have an error because this, this private method is not accessible to you know struct or classes outside the the struct here so let's make it back to public and then we we have that so point to note again for structs structs can have fields just like we've seen you can have fields you can have constructor you can have implementation methods like that you know but structs cannot have a parameterless constructor you know and if you are comparing struct with a class struct is a value type while class is a reference type right so and one might ask because if you by the time we talk about class you see that it's pretty similar so why would you need a struct you know when you can easily use a, a class so if 
you know uh, you want to reference the the data implicitly then the right um data to use will be a struct if you're not going to be as doing a, a lot of casting and modification the right ones to use is, is struct you know not class because class takes more memory because the reference uh, type it points to the reference the memory location not the mo location itself all right so but if you're using um and then if you if some if a class is going to be or a struct is going to be deriving from that struct then you you have to use a class because um struct is not is not um derivable you know um you know yeah it's not it's not derivable so uh, you are going to have to use a class if at some point there will be a a, a derived uh, a derived uh, element of what you're creating you want something to derive from here or inherit from whatever it is you have here so you're going to have to use a class for it you know so you see more of class by the time we get there this is just a bit of what a structure is so let's move on